Now joined on the sports mix by the head coach of Hedgesville football, Matt Faircloth. Coach Faircloth, last week your team falls 32-7 to at Liberty, a tough game for your squad overall. What were your uh, thoughts on that game? Uh, I thought we got better at some things. Uh, you know, we, we had a game plan going in. I thought defense executed it. Uh, we, you know, we gave up two touchdowns there on two two big pick sixes. So for us, I mean, limiting uh, their offense to one touchdown there in the second half, uh, you know, we did some things right. We limited their top receiver to three catches. Uh, and, I mean, one of them was a touchdown, which really hurt uh, right there before half, uh, which, I mean, we were 7-6 lead. Uh, with about 12 seconds left in the half, and we gave that touchdown up on a comeback route. Um, uh, got better there. Uh, we were we were pretty good special teams all night. Uh, right now, it's just about getting the execution down uh, offensively and and making sure that uh, we do what we did in the first half when we had an 80 yard drive, uh, a 12 play 80 yard drive, and, and finished it off with a touchdown. So we see all the little things, you know, you know when we execute them, and we do really what the game plan and everything stays. I mean, we're, we're, we're not bad. It's just we have to now sustain it, and, and that's going to be the next step. You mentioned the offense, so I'll kind of go there first and unfortunately don't get the opportunity to see every game uh, for you guys, but just looking at the final scores, I can see putting points on the board's definitely been a struggle here during the four game losing streak what what do you kind of attribute that to and how do you feel like you can fix that here in this point of the season i I think the biggest thing is is just the 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 execution uh you know it's you know we're get we're get four guys on the o-line doing the right thing and then you know one guy forgets his assignment and then you get a run through you get a tackle for loss so i mean it's all you know that 80 yard drive we had uh there in the first half against liberty Everything was clicking. Everything was there. Everybody was doing their job. Everything was positive yards. Uh, we made the right reads as far as pulling the ball and throwing it. It's just you, you got to be able to do that for for four quarters. It can't just be one drive and 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 settle in. I think the biggest thing for us going forward is knowing what our reads, what our assignments are. And I mean, they know them. It's just about getting them to execute them when it comes game time. I know a few weeks ago. We talked a little bit about some changes potentially being made and some already made. With that being said, what have you seen, I guess, in that aspect of things? And do you think that there might be some more changes coming? Yeah, I mean, I think the changes uh, overall, I think we, you know, we put in some kids that, you know, compete uh, really hard at an at a, at a extremely high level. Uh, they're young, but at the end of the day, they come in, they bring effort, they bring energy, and they, they do their job. So, you know, that's been a plus for us. Uh, you know, there's there's always going to be changes as things start to, you know, if a, you know, if we're not doing the right things, there's always going to be a chance for changes. And for us right now, I think, you know, offensively, we got to look at, you know, getting the ball out in space a little bit more and, and trying to take some shots with, with some guys that we do have. Uh, but it, at the end of the day, right now, it's just, you know, putting it all together. How do you make sure everybody stays positive and confident during a uh, stretch like this in the season? I mean, our, our guys are locked in. I mean, it's you know we've had two really good practices this week, uh, pretty pretty physical practices. Our guy, the one thing about our guys is you know they've been they've been through so much adversity. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. Our kids keep showing up. They keep working hard. They're still learning. Uh, you know. But at the end of the day, our kids, our kids are going to show up, keep grinding, and we're going to keep coaching them. And and at the end of the day, you know everybody's making the playoffs this year, so we got to keep trying to climb out of the hole and start to peak when it comes that time. This week, you guys uh, head to Muscleman. What stands out to you about this year's Appleman team? They're physical. They play hard. They play with effort. Uh, you know, they they run the ball really, really really hard uh I've, I've seen film i've seen them in person uh you know number four for them really really runs the ball hard they're physical up front they they're uh blocking backs they get through the hole and they're they're physical as well uh defensively they fly around they get hands on and you know it's what you've come to you know you know everybody talks about how much 
they lost with the transfer thing. But at the end of the day, their kids are always going to show up. They're going to play hard, and they're hard in those kids. The history between Hedgesville and Musselman is immense. It's the, I believe, or at least one of the longest uh, storied rivalries in the area, if not in the entire state. Just talk to us a little bit about that rivalry and how special it is in the community. I mean, I think you know, even when when I was in high school, it was a big it was a big deal, and you know, it still is, and you know, it's always a game that you you know you circle on your schedule just for the simple fact of that it's been going for so long, and it's got you know, it's a lot of story story games and story traditions when you get into that game, and it means a lot to you know either end of the county, and for us, you know, it's this is one of those games that if we have to get you up to play this game. This game ain't meant for you. Um, this is a game that we, you know, all these kids look forward to every year, and you know they brought the energy so far this week and and, and locked in as about as much as we've seen them all year. You mentioned playing in this rivalry. Now you're coaching in this rivalry. Throughout the time, as the history goes on, what has maybe changed in the rivalry, and what are some things that have stayed the same? I mean, I think, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think we've beat them since 2007. So, you know, that's that's one thing that you always want to try to end and, and get – because, you know, if you don't win the rivalry game, it, you know, it, it pretty much put a, puts a damper on the rest of things. So getting that getting that turned around, that's that's a big thing that we can look forward to and, and try, going to go out and try to do Friday night. But I don't think much has changed just because, you know, it's a, it's a storied rivalry game. It, it, it means – so much to both ends of the county and you know i don't think on friday night you're going to be able to tell whether we're two and four or their whatever their record is you're not going to be able to tell because it's going to be two hard-nosed football teams trying to win a game you mentioned the uh streak that musselman's on and defeating you guys in this rivalry what do you think it's going to take to finally get that win this friday night got to come out and you got to play four quarters and you got to execute and and the biggest thing is you got to match, you got to match their effort, their energy. Because uh, if there's one thing that we've learned over time is, you know, when when Musselman comes in, they're coming in with effort and energy, and they're coming in to run through your face. So for us, it's we got to go out and we got to answer the call. We asked this question earlier this week to Coach Thomas, who also played in this rivalry alongside you on the Hedgesville side, but now coaches the. Musselman side of things. Uh, what are some favorite memories for you, either as a player or as a coach, in this uh, rivalry? Uh, I think it was. Oh man, I think it was 2017, maybe even 2018, uh, when we went. We played them down there, uh, going into the fourth quarter. I think it was two minutes, three minutes left. Uh, we were up. I think it was 10-7 at that point. Uh, or maybe even 12-6, and they scored a touchdown late to beat us. And that was probably one of the best football games uh, I've been a part of because that place was packed. And, and it being a rivalry game, it was it, it was uh, hard hard to be on the other end of it, but it was one, one heck of a football game. All right, Coach Faircloth, anything else? If not, we'll get to the fun question. That's it. All right. If you could choose one person, dead or alive, to meet, have a conversation with, who would it be and why? Uh, if I could have one more conversation with my grandfather, that that would be the the one that I would uh, wish for. All right. Thank you, Coach, for the time. Best of luck. I appreciate it.